Good day, everybody. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to re-image a SD card for a Raspberry Pi. So, first things first, there are two requirements. You need a copy of the most recent version of Raspi, a utility to image Raspbian onto a SD or a micro SD card. So this will be our software requirements. Now for hardware, uh, depending on the devices that you're using, you might actually have a SD card and you have an SD card reader, in which case you're good. Uh, if you have a micro SD, if you have a micro SD to SD reader and you have an SD card slot in said device, you are good. Uh, if not, you can pick up a micro USB to SD and that will function fine. So first things first, let's get those. Now there are many utilities that you can use to image an SD card in Windows. Uh, Disk Imager for example, Rufus, uh, Etcher however, by Bellina works on all platforms, so Windows, Mac, and Linux, and is fairly straightforward and simple to use. So we will start by going to the Bellina website, which is www.bellina.io backslash etcher. Down for your, download for the relevant platform. Sixty-eight point nine megabytes, so relatively quick, depending on your internet. Wait for Windows Safe Scan to finish doing its thing. While we wait for that, we can Google. Actually, I think it might have started. Raspy and download. So it will be the first result. Uh, RaspberryPi.org. Do be sure that you are careful what website you download a operating system from. If you download a operating system from a nefarious, sorry, a nefarious target, they could embed stuff that gives you an unpleasant time. So on the downloads page, we are looking for Raspian. Like that and we are given three options the option we are interested in is raspy and stretch with desktop and recommended software this will give us uh, most of the base of what we need as well as the graphical user interface to explain the other options there's raspy and stretch with desktop so still get the GUI but you get less of the utilities and then finally raspy and stretch light which is more server focused. Uh, so if you're running things headlessly or as daemons, this does not include a graphical user interface. All right, so you are given two options as far as how to download it. The servers are not the fastest, so you can download directly via HTTP using zip. Uh, it does take some time. Or you can go torrent route, in which case you're making use of peer-to-peer -peer, and depending on how many people are seating and the bandwidth you have, that one is generally the quickest option. So for this video, I have gone ahead and downloaded the IMG as well as the Belina Etcher install. However, we did run that. So here's the installation for Belina. Fairly straight through, Apache license. Give that some time to install. So our hardware requirements are a device to interface with a SD or a micro SD card, depending on the situation. Uh, if you're watching this from class, it's micro SD. All right, so Belina is finished installing, or Etcher is finished installing. So Etcher basically follows fairly straightforward three-step approach. So, if you already have the SD card on your Pi, or in your Pi, I should say, you'll find it in the back. 
can use your finger to remove it. There is a little notch that you can hook onto. There we go. You'll want to put that into the reader. Careful to put that in the right way. There we go. You'll feel it lock. And then finally, insert the reader into your computer. That extra window is strictly because I'm running this through a virtual machine, so it was just asking me what I wanted to do with my USB input. All right, so we have the USB card inserted. Belina has gone ahead and detected that as a, or Etcher has gone ahead and detected that. There's our 16 gig partition. So it's asking for an image. The image is the file that we've downloaded from the Raspbian website, uh, either via torrent or zip file. So if you go to your, in my case, it's the desktop, you might have it in your downloads folder if you went the direct route or wherever your torrents end up if you took that option. So I will click that. And now finally it gives me an option to flash and flash. All right, that is basically it. That is how you image your SD card back to factory stock. Uh, it will take some time to flash the device. It really all depends on the interface you're flashing with. So for example, mine is a little bit of an older USB 2.0 interface, so it's limited at those speeds. So once this is done flashing, um, it's going to change to verifying. That's just it reading back the data to make sure that everything is legit and the flash was successful. If you are strapped for time, you can exit out of the verifying step. Uh, at that point, it is written to the card, so the card is functional. However, it is obviously recommended that you do not do that if you have the time to continue with the verification. And that note, have yourself a good day.